So I've done two tutorials this week, but you know, obviously things keep moving very quickly in the creative AI space. So I thought I'd do a quick roundup of news and interesting things that I've had my eye on. So four topics today, a bit of a grab bag, but all very interesting. Okay, let's dive in. First up, Runway ML have found themselves in a bit of hot water, according to a report from 404media.co. According to the report, they have received an alleged leaked internal runway spreadsheet, which details a few thousand, actually, to be fair, actually much more than a few thousand YouTube videos that Gen 3 was trained on, including from some heavy hitters like Marquise Brownlee and Casey Neistat. On a personal note, as someone who straddles the line between AI video and YouTube, uh, you know, I've got a little skin in the game. So, of course, I had to go searching to see if my channel appeared. It does not. Not going to lie feelings kind of hurt. Now, I do think it's important to note that Runway ML has neither confirmed nor denied this leak. The spreadsheet, which actually you can check out, it is linked down below, does have a lot of YouTube channels on it. Uh, there's a pretty interesting use case for this coming up if you are a Gen 3 user, though. The spreadsheet is not simply limited to YouTube channels. Uh, it does contain links to uh, other media and entertainment companies, including The New Yorker, Vice, Pixar, Disney, Netflix, and Sony. According to a quote from an unnamed ex-Runway employee, uh, the channels in that spreadsheet were a company-wide effort to find good quality videos to build the model with. This was then used as input to a massive web crawler, which downloaded all the videos from all those channels using proxies to avoid getting blocked by Google. Now, again, it is important to note that there's no way to know if each of these videos has been used in Gen 3 training. That said, 404 Media did run across a pretty interesting generation. Uh, within the spreadsheet, there's actually one that is labeled the holy grail of car cinematics so far uh, from Defy Studio. This is a channel that specializes, obviously, in cinematic car footage. Uh, yeah, it's actually a really cool channel. I recommend to check it out. So when 404 ran the prompt, a video in the style of Defy Productions of a racing car. Now, as a note, the studio's Defy logo does have the E facing backwards. So, you know, there is that. At the end of the day, this is a story that I think we're going to be hearing echoed quite a bit over the next year or so. It's obviously just coming off the heels of the Proof News story in July that found that Anthropic, NVIDIA, Apple, and Salesforce used subtitles from uh, 173,000 YouTube videos. And of course, we can't forget the now infamous Wall Street Journal interview with Mir Marathi when asked about where Sora's training data came from. And uh, she basically said, I don't know, and uh, we used publicly available available data. Neil Mohan, YouTube's CEO, responded to all of this back in April, saying that the terms of service does not allow for things like transcripts or video bits to be downloaded. It also should be noted that Google is actually allowed to train on YouTube videos as it is in the terms of service. Yeah, for the first time ever, Gemini was helpful to me. Usually it just tells me like, I don't know how to do that or I can't access that. But in terms of looking over the YouTube terms of service, Gemini was like, sure. So it did answer me. Uh, yes, YouTube and Google are allowed to use the content in YouTube videos for various purposes, including training as outlined in their terms of service. Now, the way that training the algorithm is poised here is that, you know, YouTube and Google can use your content to improve their recommendation systems, search algorithms and content moderation tools. So, you know, just the overall YouTube algorithm of, you know, search and what videos it's serving to you. But right under that is also develop new features in which your content can help them create new products and services that enhance the YouTube experience, which might possibly include Google's view, which we have suspiciously not heard much about. All of which is to say, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. And this is certainly not the last time that we're going to be hearing this story. I'm not going to lean in with any like hot takes on this. For one, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, two, I'm just a guy that likes to explore this technology to make cool things. Speaking of which, if you are a Runway Gen 3 user, uh, the spreadsheet is actually kind of a treasure trove of interesting keywords. For example, under one of these tabs, we do have keywords plus ad qualifiers. Now, these are granted search terms, uh, but I, you know you have to think that they're probably attached as tags in Gen 3 as well. And under recommended qualifiers, we have things like 4K cinematic footage and official video. Now, I'm not going to say that all of these will necessarily yield like the most amazing results, but it does give you an interesting look at sort of what Gen 3 probably knows. And as my pal Justin Hollywood noted, uh, you could probably take some of this data and turn it into a GPT. So 
that's what I did. So if anybody wanted the Runway Gen 3 Ultimate Prompt Builder is now available over on the GPT store. It is free, obviously, because it's a GPT. Um, and this basically allows you to like type in whatever phrase you want. Let's just say a uh, hot air balloon um, in Turkey, let's just say, because I know that the people of Turkey enjoy their hot air balloons. Uh, hit enter and it'll create a prompt for you that you can run in Gen 3. And there you go. Man, the landscape of Turkey is super sci-fi, apparently. I mean, what can I say? I mean, Gen 3 is still going to Gen 3. You could also upload an image if you want. So we're going to take this screenshot of me from a video that I did yesterday. Um, just drop that into the GPT, run that. And given this output, I think that effectively proves that I do not appear in any of this training data. Runway, if you want my videos, just let me know. I'm more than happy to send them over to you. In like three months, everybody's going to be mad because their Gen 3 characters just keep telling bad dad jokes. Moving on, we have ReSona, which is kind of in the early stages, but basically this ends up creating audio based off of video. So obviously this is not generating like dialogue or anything. This is more about sort of sound effects and general atmospherics. Um, let's take a listen with these. I think this is a Sora generated kind of uh, toucans in a rainforest. Now, I will say as AI video is to well, video, AI audio is obviously going to be to audio, which is, you know, you're going to get some good stuff and you're going to get some not so good stuff. For example, this clip from the original Nosferatu. Hey, a vampire on a boat. I wonder. Uh, anyhow, yeah, uh, this sounds pretty good. But you might also end up with stuff like this. Now, I don't know what you heard, but what I heard was Renfield run off screen. It sounds like a zipper goes down and then a woman screams. So, you know, I don't know what version of Nosferatu this is, but uh, yeah, this is definitely not the version that I saw. I do think it works pretty well for kind of more atmospheric stuff. Let's take this beach scene, for example. I mean, it's pretty impressive that it was able to transition into the sound of the camera going underwater. Another example from Pietro Fantoni gives us this. Yeah, overall, it does more or less feel like Rizona does understand the assignment. Rizona is in beta right now. You can request access at the link down below. Um, there was only like 70 some odd people that have signed up so far. So uh, if you head over soon, you got a pretty good chance. Next up, a quick spot from the sponsor of today's video, Mushin. This one is relevant to your interests. Mushin, I have covered on the channel in the past. You might remember them as the platform where you could generate 3D character model movement with a prompt. Well, now they're moving into their next phase with Mushin Storyteller. Now, this one is still a little early in, but it shows a lot of potential. They've been adding in new features at a very rapid pace. As its name implies, a Storyteller is a you know prompt to storytelling platform. Uh, we've seen a few of these before, but this one does have a few tricks up its sleeve. To get started, obviously, all you need to do is generate from a prompt. Um, this will give you up to 20,000 characters in which to write your synopsis or story. And then from there, you have a number of different styles that you can choose from, uh, considering that this is sort of a, you know, fantasy evil wizard thing. Uh, we're going to go with a painting style. From there, you just, you know, hit the generate button. From here, you end up with your entire story laid out as storyboards. Now, I often say that most of the time with these sort of, you know, prompt to story generators, uh, they're going to take some massaging. Um, so you can change out the narration here if you want to. But where I think things start to get really interesting is when, you know, obviously you have a scene that you're not exactly thrilled with uh, and you end up hitting this regenerate button where you can obviously reprompt the scene. But here's where things get interesting because uh, we have this pose reference feature here. Uh, and if you turn that on, you now get some motion controls. Uh, yeah, you have a number of various poses that you can choose. So I mean, she's in this like kind of karate pose here. Uh, and we can even rotate and move our camera around. 
We can even use that motion superpower uh, by prompting for a pose, and we can even zoom in and have full camera controls over our character. And indeed, we now have our red-haired knight standing there with her arms crossed defiantly. Now, currently, animations are kind of more in that like parallaxing, like storybook kind of style, but uh, we're gonna talk more about that in just a minute. They've also added in the ability to use assets. So, uh, for example, uh, taking like, this mid journey character um, and dropping him in, he definitely makes no sense being there. Uh, and obviously, you know, we have our background here, but we can simply knock out our background and, uh, you know, hitting the remove background button here. And while this isn't the greatest job of comping our guy in, we definitely do see that you can add elements into your compositions. Once you have your story, you know, kind of relatively put together, you hit the next button, and then obviously you have some choices in terms of titling it, giving it subtitles, changing out some thumbnails, uh, doing the scene effects and transitions, uh, and then compositing the whole thing together. Now, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that where all of this is likely headed, you know, considering that this is Mushin, who really were a pioneer in the whole like 3D character text to motion thing, is that we will eventually be able to do, you know, text and camera movement on these characters within, you know, the animate section. And that is going to be massively powerful. You can head over to storyteller.mushin.com. It is linked obviously down below to try it out. It is free. Uh, they give you 200 credits per month to test the platform out. Thanks to Mushin for sponsoring this video. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of them as Storyteller develops. Rounding out, we have Crowd Mode Gen, zero shot text driven collective motion generation, or as I like to call it, the zombie horde simulator. I mean, to be honest, really what it is, is, you know, multiple characters in one scene, uh, all having motion based off of one user prompt. It might look a little basic right now, but I mean, the underlying technology here allows for, you know, these essentially NPC characters to have some level of acknowledgement of their surroundings. You have sliders to define the size of the crowd that you're in, but more so than that, you can actually even assign objects. Like in this case, the prompt here is a car driving into the crowd. And from there, the model takes over via the crowd scene planner. And, you know, obviously tracks person one there with the uh, reaction avoiding. Very wise of you, NPC, very wise. This isn't something entirely new. I mean, we've seen this technology at work in things like, you know, the giant battle sequences in Lord of the Rings, uh, which actually used a proprietary software called Massive, the multiple agent simulation system in virtual environment to handle like those giant orc versus elves battle scenes. But obviously what is massive is probably, well, massive in cost. So uh, this is a nice version of it that we can have uh, where we can use it for our own projects. Is it 100% ready for prime time? Absolutely not. But, you know, it might be fun to play around with. Code is coming soon on GitHub. So if anybody wants to start playing around with it, um, you know, there it is. So that's it for today. But I'm sure we will be seeing each other again very soon. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.